I mean, I, I, I love Buffalo. I don't think there's a better place to live in the country than Buffalo. I read that you uh, were drafted by the Eagles, right? Correct. How'd you find yourself? That was Eagles? a long time ago because yeah, yeah. the Eagles cut me. Is that right? So, yeah. Yeah, so and then and I had played a bunch of preseason games. So, you know, Bill Polian was kind of a master at trying to find guys that uh, from small schools. I had great respect for Hank Bulla, although I think he was a he was a terrific defensive coordinator. I don't think his skill set lent itself to to be as as uh, as um, successful as a head coach. Unfortunately, it was uh, they they were fired about halfway through my rookie season and and uh, Marv came in and he was you know a little bit the antithesis because Hank was a you know rough and tumble football guy and Marv was this uh, you know uh, highly educated and uh, the stories he would tell and, and Hank was just a you know he was a sweatshirt kind of a Bill Belichick type guy and Marv showed up in a, in a blazer and had cue cards the first meeting that we had in 1986. Where would you rather be <coughs> than right here right now? Uh, did he get that before every game? I wouldn't say every game, but uh, occasionally he would say that and would lean over to somebody and say, I think I'd rather be in Tampa right now because it is <laughs> darn cold outside. He was one of us, you know. He was, I mean, he, he brought that, um, that, that Western New York uh, kind of sentimentality to the team. And, I mean, he was, uh, you know, that was the year that Bill ended up getting both he and Cornelius Bennett, which they were the two best linebackers in college football in 86. And he was a big part of, of the success of the team and the in, not just from his from his uh, you know his football acumen and his play on the field, but because he was I think he was AFC Rookie of the Year or, my, or he was he was NFL Rookie of the Year I believe. But he because of the ties he had with the Western New York community, particularly the Southern Tier in Chautauqua County, and his dad being a police officer. I mean, we them that was the days we had that basketball team in the offseason. We played in every small town and you know, in the Southern Tier, and you know, every night after the game would be going over to the Mason's Club or the Lions Club or the Rotary Club somewhere and just spending time with guys in the community. And that was, I mean, that was a big part of our success because they all felt like, everybody in Western New York felt like they were part of that team. He's a, I mean, he was a great guy. I mean, I think he's a guy that probably should get Hall of Fame consideration someday because he was such a steady, he was a three-down linebacker all the time. He's just a great player. Funny, funniest thing that ever happened to Mark Kelso, how would you fill in that blank? Obviously I wore that the, the extra padding on my helmet which I felt was extremely uh, beneficial to me and, and, and really saved my career because I wouldn't have continued to play had I continued suffering concussions without some added protection and I had a young family at the time and my wife basically said there's no way I want you to play if if you're going to continue to to have concussions and I would agree and and I feel healthy today and fortunate to be the beneficiary of that technology. You know, one time we were playing against the Jets and when Boomer Sison had become the quarterback and he came up, we were in the red area and he started barking out signals and he looked up at me and he just, he couldn't continue to snap count because he was just, he was laughing because it looked so ridiculous. That was the first one we wore and then consequently the next year it's, we streamlined it a lot and it looked a little bigger. You couldn't really tell it was on your head. But, and there was a game against the, the Oakland Raiders when it came off, when I hit somebody, it was just held on with Velcro. And then, uh, you know, the, uh, um, the, the, I hit the player as after he caught a uh, caught a ball, and as he went backwards, you know he kind of caught the edge of the pro cap, and it, it came off of my helmet. And I think the announcers were saying he lost his head; his head flew off, and and uh, they didn't really know what had happened. Yeah. The first night I wore it was a Monday night against the Los Angeles Rams. I had two interceptions and about ten tackles, and you know, it gave me the freedom to play with the aggressiveness I was accustomed to. And from that point on, it was, you know, Abe said, I'm not going to clear you to play unless you wear the product. Greatest comeback in NFL history, period. The Bills rallied from a 32-point third-quarter deficit. So we, you know, we go into that game, and we just, we felt like we were tired at one point, you know, I think, when we started that game. Because when we were in, when we were in Minnesota, we were practicing at the University of Minnesota for the Super Bowl in, in uh, Minneapolis. And uh, we looked at each other on Wednesday and we said, do you realize this is our 44th game in two years? Counting the preseason, that was number 44 of the Super Bowl 26. And we just, it, it's, it's exhausting. It's exhausting physically and mentally. After the, the loss to, in Houston, we were kind of tired. And we came back. And then I, you know, I, it was probably a benefit that, they, that, that the Oilers were able to to uh, to mount such a, a, a seem, what seemed like an insurmountable lead in the first half because we I think then we decided you know we can't go out like this we're gonna we have to fight to the end here 
And, uh, you know, had it been a close game the whole time, I don't know. But the fact that they, you know, some good things happened. And we missed some plays in the first half by just by inches, inches. And, and everything went their way. And then everything started going our way. And, um, you know, we did nothing at halftime other than say, you know, one of our assistant coaches, Chuck Lester, I think he said, you know, let's just go back to the basic defense because we were trying to play some nickel defense against their, their run and shoot. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't have an opportunity to play it that much. So it, we weren't as efficient at that as we were at just regular defense. And we, so we went back to basics and just said, let's just play. Let's see what happens. You know, the first few series and, and we scored. There were 21 points scored before we even saw the field in the second half. Um, uh, if I recall correctly, yeah, because they scored 21 points total, 14 by us and seven by them before the defense took the field. And, and um, so it was, you know, in, in, in my favorite picture of that whole game is rubbing his head on the sidelines like, I can't believe this is happening. But we had the utmost, utmost confidence. I mean, we had nothing to lose, really. You know, they had everything to lose. That game kind of epitomized the fact that every player is important because everybody contributed, and even down to Adam Lehner, whose only job was to snap the football. If he doesn't snap it properly, we don't win that game. 32 yards from the center of the field. Adam Lehner ready to snap it back. It's 30 the image that sticks in my head is Mark Pike, you know, and who's a special teamer, but the critical role he played, and you know, after the, because he was the first one jumping up in the air, that's the first number you saw was 94, when, uh, you know, after he converted the field goals. It was it was fun to again it was fun to be a part of and you know and that kind of launched us to that third Super Bowl. Is it hard for you to watch a Super Bowl? I don't watch the end. Yeah, yeah I watch the games, but uh, you know and sometimes I watch close to the end, but I, I can't watch a celebration because it's you know because that's the one thing that eluded us was yeah. that that ultimate celebration and I as much as I I would have enjoyed that myself. I would have been more enjoyable for the fans of Buffalo to experience a Super Bowl championship. I can't imagine. I mean, when we came back from, from Tampa, there were 25,000 fans in Niagara Square, and, uh, and they were all chatting Scott Norwood's name because they wanted them to know that you know, they didn't blame him or it wasn't his fault, and we were in this together. We're a city. We're a team. And, uh, and I can't imagine what it would have been like had we come back and hoisted the trophy. Now, if we would have won that first year, uh, we probably would have gotten back the second year because we were just so good. But we wouldn't have gone back four years in a row, I can guarantee that. Um, I don't know what I'd trade. I, mean, you know, we, I think about that occasionally, and people ask you, well, would you trade one for four? I don't know. I say no, and then my wife says, but wouldn't you just love to see the fans of Buffalo hoist that Sid Lombardi trophy? And then you think, yeah, I would. But I wouldn't want to trade one for being a terrible team. Win one year and then just be a mediocre team the rest. If you're still a good team, perhaps. But I'd trade four for two. But I wouldn't trade, you know, I don't think I'd trade one for four. Yeah. It just, it was, because we, we were, you know, with all, I mean, with all due respect to the great teams of all time, you know, are we one of the top five greatest teams of all time? Uh, maybe not, but certainly in the top ten. Yeah. You know, with you talk about a group of 22 players that were with four Super Bowls, and that leaves off a couple great guys like Shane and Will Wolford and, and, um, and uh, I don't know if Nate was here the whole time with us, uh, but, uh, but you know, a couple of those guys started to leave. There, I think there were 22 that were there for four years, if I recall. The organization wanted to connect the 90s to the current Bills, you know, to try to bring back that fan base that, that they had lost because they hadn't been in the playoffs, and I could understand. I'm not going to criticize guys. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to analyze the game and let the educated fan determine whose fault it was or what's going on. But I'm going to explain why something worked, why it didn't work. I teach fifth grade, so I'm going to, I'm going to paint a picture for the, for the listener. Murph's great. You know, he's, he's really easy to work with. I think he's the best in the business. I thought I intercepted eight passes that year, didn't I? Maybe only 70. But I hate when they say that, your best year, best, because you intercepted the most passes that year, they think it was your best year. You know, I did have a good year that year, but not, you know, it's like, okay, wait, he had a great year in 88, but that was like his third year, and then what, what's the next five years? What happened there? Looking to tie the game. And it is deflected. He can run. He can run. He can run. It is... Kelso! Mark Kelso! No! For the deflection! Touchdown! No flags!